Hello and welcome to Metaphysics Computing. My name is Cameron Kirk and this is the first video in uh, my Applied Python tutorial series. Um, so why am I doing Applied? Well, I feel like there's just a lot of content out there on YouTube for learning Python or any other programming language. And I feel like they all start with like the basic fundamentals for Python. You know, like this is a variable. You can take two numbers, add it into a variable. Um, this is a string. It, and it goes on and on and on and it covers all of the mechanical features I guess you could say of the programming language um, but they never really talk about the applications and uh, I feel like at some point there is a point where you do reach applications you know maybe you jump right into machine learning but see that's that's an application um, that's not uh, learning the basics so we're gonna skip past learning the basics and we're gonna do some sort of like applied stuff in this tutorial series so with that said, I'll go ahead and pull up my slides for this first episode. I just want to do a quick introduction because, and I'll move down here on the side. Okay, that looks good. Um, because we're going to be talking about coordinate systems and transformations for the first um, set of videos on this tutorial series using Python. Um, so before we jump into Python and doing any coding, um, I want to talk a little bit about coordinate systems and transformations and why they're important. So let's go to the next slide. And um, the Cartesian coordinate system, we all know it, we all love it. Um, it's uh, what you usually learn when you first start uh, looking at math when you're a kid. Um, it's the most accessible to everyone because of that. And it's very straightforward to understand. You know, you're putting uh, numbers on a grid like you're, uh, you have the y axis and you have the x axis and all you're doing is comparing like how big does y get with how big x gets like that's the whole point of the Cartesian coordinate system it's very straightforward everything's at right angles um, it's used everywhere okay so um, because of its uh, you know visual um, having everything on right angles it's great for visual comparisons by nature so like someone could look at this and see like um, oh as this gets bigger the other thing gets bigger um, and it's it's easy to understand how something has a relationship with something else and I'm going to show a couple of examples um, so even if someone doesn't study math and they don't do a lot of graphs they are able to look at a graph and uh, get an understanding of how something works so let's take a look at some examples um, I have Google opened up here. I'm on the uh, coordinate system on uh, page on Wikipedia. And right here, this picture, they're showing that, uh, you know, in physics, you're using uh, a vector uh, with a magnitude and two angles uh, to describe where it's pointing with relation to the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So I guess you could say this is polar. I think in here they call it spherical coordinates. Um, yeah, so that's just one example, but that's not the example I wanted to show you guys. Um, I wanted to show you guys Google Trends. Um, so I don't know, like this is something I just discovered just this weekend. I wanted to share it with you all. Uh, I was staring at this for probably a good hour of a day. Um, just two days ago, I was just like fascinated with this. So basically the way it works is you can type in a search term and see how often it's being searched for over time. So here it is Python tutorial. You can see there's steady interest since uh, Google started uh, tracking this in 2004. Um, but here's another interesting thing. If I search for a university, let's do Harvard. You can see uh, it's kind of trending down as we get into 2020. Um, and maybe you can think about why that is, or maybe there's no necessarily correct reason why. But also another interesting observation I'm making is it seems to have like little maybe a square wave, maybe a sine wave, some sort of features here where it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down and then you can really see that it goes down in the summer <laughs> when it's in the middle of summer nobody's really googling uh harvard we can we can do other schools too let's let's do the school i went to unlv and uh oh yeah i mean like look at that it's uh it looks very very nice very periodic we can compare it um you know like let's do uc um ucsd um See how they compare. Obviously, UCSD is more popular in the United States, especially in California. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a very interesting website, very interesting to look at, but even still, even though it's a different university, you can definitely see trends of like some sort of periodic cycle 
uh, throughout the year. So it's very, very interesting to look at. So if you haven't looked at Google Trends before, check it out. Maybe you can think of some cool questions and really uh, start to see um, some interesting things on here. Okay, so the next thing is uh, obviously like, you know, this is a Cartesian graph. These are Cartesian coordinates. The COVID-19 new cases. Uh, it's easy for humans to look at this graph, all of the data brought together, and they made a picture out of the data. And so then even people who are not mathematically inclined, they can look at this and see, oh, the cases are going up. Interesting. Uh, and, you know, everybody's allowed to say things. Everybody's allowed to interpret it. Everybody's allowed to do things in response to this information. But the big idea is that you're able to compare as time goes on, cases went up. And you, that's an observation. And you get an understanding of what's going on here. Uh, another uh, example is the stock market. Um, so this is showing, I just Google searched Dow Jones, but you can set this to the maximum history of the stock market and you can see, oh, as the years go by, the stock market goes up. You know, maybe there's some exceptions where it goes down, but it never went down back to the start how it was. So you get the idea. All right, so let's get back to the slides. All right, so um, pretty interesting stuff, right? Okay, so let's go to uh, the next slide. Um, let's talk about alternative coordinate systems um, and their applications. So uh, everybody loves the coordinate system for the Cartesian coordinate system because it's simple to look at, simple to understand what's going on. Um, but sometimes it's not necessarily the best thing to use everywhere. Think about radar, um, how they, like they have a, you know, a radius and an angle uh, rather than a grid, uh, a square grid. Um, so the radar is located here and it measures a certain distance and then uh, at a certain uh, direction, like distance and direction, that's what it's mapping out. And it makes a lot more sense in this case to use the polar system rather than the Cartesian coordinate system. So this is just one example showing that, hey, you know, while there is Cartesian coordinates, it's not the only thing out there. There are other Cartesian coordinate systems. So um, here's another example, crystallography. Um, if you're looking at uh, the structure of atoms, you know, in this case, this isn't even a crystal structure. This is just, uh, you know, uh, an H2O molecule. But um, even in uh, uh, crystals, like uh, if you grow a crystal, diamonds, diamonds have a crystal structure. Um, the idea is that, um, like look at this look at this graph these things are not at right angles to each other there is a uh, 108 120 degree um angle uh and then this one is going to be a 120 minus 180 which is 60 degrees so it's at 60 degrees and 120 degrees it, anyways you get the idea this is not a cartesian coordinate system if you wanted to map the point one one on uh onto a cartesian coordinate uh, you would have to, it, they would be different coordinate points. And, and we'll, we'll start to learn that and see that later on as we get in, further into this tutorial series. But I just wanted to point out like, hey, it's not just radar. Uh, we have non-Cartesian and non-polar coordinates here. This is something totally different, something kind of weird and wonky. And it's like, why would anybody describe things like this? Well, the reality is, is that like, if you're gonna be studying crystal structures, it would be very helpful if you could map, uh, okay, at this point on the grid, here's an atom. Okay, and then the next atom is here. If you can map every single repeating atom in the uh, geometry of a crystal, uh, and then you, you'll come up with some sort of system like this where, uh, okay, it, the next atom isn't necessarily straight above. It's gonna be a little bit over, but this would be the atom zero, zero at the origin, and then this could be the atom uh, zero, one, the atom right above it. And you'll notice it's not a straight path to go to the atom uh, above it in this coordinate system. So this is the atom above it, but it's not a right angle approach. It's a 120 degree angle. So 90 degrees would be here. Um, I'm pointing my mouth. A anyways, you get the idea. I'm going to move on. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, this is the last slide. Another application. Computer graphics. They're literally taking th 3D world with 3D coordinates and mapping it to a two-dimensional screen. So that's that's really bizarre that they're able to take something that's like, okay, forward, backward, left, right, up, down. They're able to take that and they're able to represent it on something that's flat. 
And it's like, okay, how do they do that? Um, well, the reality is, is they're doing transformations. They're transforming the coordinates from the 3D world to a 2D plane, and they're mapping each pixel to light up a certain color. And uh, again, it's coordinate transformations. If I, let's say for example, I move my hand and I'm in a video game and, I, and I'm in a 3D world, I move my hand towards the screen, you can see my hand is getting bigger. So mapping that onto a flat screen means that it's, it's taking up more pixels. It is blocking the things that are behind my hand. And also the hand is getting bigger because I'm coming towards you. I'm not moving X axis. I'm not moving Y axis. I'm moving Z axis, which comes in and out of the screen. Um, so again, it's, it, it really does come down to um, having an algorithm, having an understanding and being able to describe how you transform from one set of coordinates into an entirely different set of coordinates and have it make sense. So video games are doing it and uh, yeah. So I think that is the end of my slideshow. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, transformations allow us to represent, and I'm, I'm just gonna read my conclusion. They allow us to represent the information in terms that someone else may better understand. Um, someone else or some something might understand better. Uh, and then this allows us to collaborate with them uh, because they're able to look at the exact same information in their terms and then be able to say something extra and then give it back to you and then you could transform it back into your coordinate system which makes sense to you um, so again it's it's just it's very powerful it's very important to be able to communicate that information and put it in the terms of uh here let me go back to full screen put it into terms of um in, in, in terms that someone else can understand better um, the good news is that we only need to describe how to do the transformation we don't have to sit there and do you know, by hand, a transformation for each coordinate, and it's not going to be a different process for each coordinate. It's going to be the same process for every single set of data points. So if we're able to describe how to do it mathematically, uh, then we leave all of the hard work to the computer and the computer can do uh, all the transformations in terms of calculating for us. So again, this is like, this is just jumping right in here. This is skipping past the hey, here's an X and Y, or, or here's a variable X, and I'm going to add two numbers, and then I'm going to divide two numbers, and then I'm going to make a different data type. We're going to skip all that, and we're going to look at like actually getting things done in this tutorial series. And if if that kind of scares you, I would I would probably suggest like maybe stick with it, maybe check out uh, the rest of the series, and because uh, it's going to really open your mind up into a new way of thinking. Um, and yeah, I really hope that uh, you, this is something that you can benefit from. Uh, maybe you'll learn some very useful things that you'll continue to use uh, with Python um, because I feel like there is a point where it's like, okay, we've had enough of the getting started and the tutorial for beginners. Uh, we want to get things done and make an impact. And and so that's really the the philosophy and, and the goal for this tutorial series. So um, yeah, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you uh, stick with me, and uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, all right, take care. Bye-bye.